some familiar faces here already, so uh, good to see you again. And uh, for anybody who has, I haven't met before, uh, good to see you. My name is Kieran O'Hokerty, as Orla said. I'm the president of the university. I met the first year students in the Bailey Allen last week, and I said that 31 years ago I was where they were as a BCom student, uh, uh, more than 31 years ago, in fact. Um, but uh, I can now say that six or seven months ago, I was where you are, because I'm just here since January. So the last induction, I was actually, uh, I spoke to myself and then sat down uh, as part of the group. So uh, uh, getting used to the, the idea that I'm the president of my alma mater and delighted to be back. A um, couple of things i just say, first of all, is uh, you're welcome, Tan Falchiroiv. August has served in the Gwynedd Shetan of us in town. I can make sure you can show a and the Tide, the Kabir Rolove, the Gwiv, and Shus and Ulskull, and the Sul of Berlin, and the So I'm looking forward to working with you in whatever roles you have uh, into the future. Um, secondly, thinking about, I've been on tour to many of the schools and units the, as, I, as I've come in, and uh, thinking about the, the next strategy and how we, we might see ourselves as a university. Uh, I'm very keen that we see ourselves in an international context. Uh, that doesn't only mean or doesn't even mean international students, but that we benchmark ourselves uh, from an international perspective, that we see ourselves really as playing a role and having a reputation and reach beyond Galway uh, into uh, in the international uh, arena, if you like. So that means uh, attracting, like yourselves, uh, international colleagues, uh, having collaborations internationally with top quality universities like ourselves, uh, but ha and having that sense that we are important I remember a couple of years ago, I facilitated the Global Irish Economic Forum, uh, and Philip King was there. It was in the, in the deep depths of the recession. Philip King is bringing it all back home. At, uh, the West Bend blows and so on. A very uh, thoughtful uh, uh, musician and, and, and um, uh, Crail Tour um, uh, broadcaster. And uh, he used the word considerable, making our Ireland considerable again. And he parsed it into a place that we would consider. And likewise, uh, I'd like to see NUI Galway as a place that's considerable internationally, that students, people in research, uh, funding agencies and others internationally uh, see us as a place to consider in the context of what they might do. And thinking about that, how we make ourselves different, considerable, dis uh, uh, distinctive, um, I think hinterlands are really important in, in, in strategy for universities. Uh, the region you're in is very difficult to replicate. We can't, nobody, nobody else can really, uh, except at, at huge expense and difficulty, make it uh, make anywhere like Galway. Uh, and therefore, I think there's, there's a real no inconsistency between having a university that has an international reputation and reach and one uh, that really draws on its hinterland and its local region in order to make itself different. And here we have real strengths in Galway that I think we can draw on in our next strategy. Uh, medical technology and medical devices is one, and we have a very strong uh, tradition there, going back to three or four presidents ago, Pat Fottrell, who started our thinking around that as a university, and we have very strong uh, research in that area, linked with the medical devices sector uh, in our hinterland. I heard a, 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 a statistic once that 85% of the stents and other heart interventions in the world uh, that has a part made in Galway. Uh, so whether it's uh, either the stent itself or other elements of it. Stents, I think 80% of stents manufactured outside the US are manufactured in the Galway region. So very important part of our hinterland is the med tech sector, and I think we can uh, really uh, do more there and, and look forward to working in that context. The second is potentially marine environmental science because of location. So Galway, uh, by location, we are close to the sea, but we're also close to the horizon. Uh, and I think in Galway, we look over the horizon very often. That gives us a sense of curiosity, a sense of wondering what's, what's over there, what, what, what belongs beyond there. And I think as a mentality, that's a really important part of uh, what anywhere Galway would have, is that sense of curiosity to see what it is uh, that we can find out uh, beyond uh, the horizon that we can see. And likewise, that, lo that sense of location, I think, gives us great benefits, great p potential uh, to work in areas like marine environmental science, other areas in order to enhance our, our international reputation. And the third area uh, is, and one I think, when you come to Galway from the outside, you might be familiar with the first two, but you should, we, generally people are familiar with the third, is Galway as a cultural space. So here we have the O'Donoghue Centre. Uh, behind us we have uh, Machnus, Barbaro, uh, and other uh, uh, cultural um, uh, organisations in Galway. Druid has, has its origin here, origins here. Uh, we have the Gaeltacht, some tell me there are Rokna Gaeltacht, so the, the Irish language speaking here, the Gaeltacht is next to us. And I see all those as opportunities to develop a, an identity that is, uh, has a very strong cultural element to it uh, and would have 
uh, that we would be front of mind, if you like, for students from Ballina, Boston or Beijing when they think about where will I go to study culture and Irish culture in particular, uh, go to NUI Galway. And I think that's a really important part of what we might develop next as a legacy. So when uh, a president is standing here in 30, 40 years time, they will say going back to that time, uh, culture was really what was developed in the context of uh, uh, the next decade, if you like. So that's, that, there are some of my thoughts around how we might develop the next strategy. There are only three areas, very open to having other conversations around other areas we might have and think about, but I think that idea of, of having a distinctive identity at, Gal at NUI Galway, which is based on our hinterland, I think is a, an important part of our next strategy. And we'll be starting the conversation in more detail over the next number of months and looking forward to having you involved in that. Because I think very often when you come from the outside, uh, you have other ideas, you have different ideas, you can add flavour to what's already here. So I would really encourage you to get engaged in those kind of debates that are here. Don't feel shy that just because you're new uh, that you don't know the place. Uh, do challenge what's happening here already. There are things that you know and have learned from elsewhere. Either good things that can be adopted here or bad things that we shouldn't do. So as a learning organisation, we should really take your ideas on board. So as we develop strategy as well, very keen that we have, we have your input. And the third area that I'm keen to think about in, in that particular context as well is thinking about Galway as a diverse space. Uh, one of the statistics I've discovered since I've come back here to Galway is that we have the highest number of students living away from home of any university in Ireland. Significantly higher. I always thought Limerick might be close. They're not even close. And what that means is we have a, real, a real di really diverse student population that's not just from Galway itself. And secondly, even Galway as a city has grown significantly. I left here in uh, 1988 uh, and uh, the city has grown and the university has grown significantly since. And what that means is that many people now living in Galway aren't from Galway uh, and are, 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 have made Galway their home but aren't originally from Galway. And that means we have a very diverse, welcoming city uh, and a city that's very vibrant, uh, very, sometimes quite noisy, uh, sometimes quite challenging and I think the university should be the same. So I'm very keen that we develop diverse voices, diverse perspectives, that we embrace diversity as a, as a strength uh, of the university, and we make that, again, something that's a hallmark of this university above any other. Uh, and you have a role uh, to play in that as well. There are some structural elements that we're, we're rolling out which, which you may not see or be familiar with, or they may be no different to places you've come from, but we are devolving a lot of budgetary authority to the colleges. Uh, and to uh, units, particularly so members of UMT will have uh, significant uh, autonomy over their own budgets and accountability for their own budgets. Uh, and also decision-making processes will be uh, hopefully more streamlined in the context of that. And that's not just structural. Uh, that's really, to me, about the cultural uh, way in which we work. So the culture of the organisation would be one where we encourage people to uh, take initiative. And we encourage, particularly in knowledge organisations, uh, research would suggest that the best uh, knowledge organisations are one which allow people with knowledge to make decisions uh, and that we would allow, uh, facilitate within a framework, a policy framework, uh, decision making at the local level as much as possible. Uh, and that's something I'm quite keen, very keen to encourage. So what I've said on tour is that everybody in this room should see themselves as a leader in their own space. Take initiative, have the energy to find ideas in your own, in your own space to implement uh, and uh, uh, take, you know, to have, have the, uh, the, the sense that you can do that. So don't wait for others uh, to tell you what to do. Try and find areas that you can find your own uh, space. And the, I, I find that certainly myself very rewarding, that if you find, have ideas that you can implement and then see those benefits, that that really gives meaning to your work. And that's something I'm very keen that we should, we should develop as a university. So there are just a couple of... Uh, uh, ideas, if you like, from, from uh, as, as I've come into the university, say, say the same here the last seven or eight months. Uh, do enjoy it here. I was a student here, as I say, till 88. The, the, the university then was 5,000 students. This was an old munitions factory, uh, IMI. We, I think we had exams here at one stage. Uh, the, the campus finished at Distillery Road, which is about just south of the bridge, just this side of the bridge. Uh, and there was nothing north. I used to run egg and spoon races and stuff as a, as a child at where the engineering building is now. Uh, so very, very different campus uh, now than it was then. Uh, and very many things have changed for the best. Inclu particularly, I think, the space that we've created is really creating research capacity. If you think about all those new spaces beyond the bridge, north of the bridge, engineering, ILAS, the business school or the... Uh, School of College of Public Business and Public Policy and Law more generally, 
A lot of those spaces are engineering, uh, sorry, mental engineering research spaces, which really create capacity. So it's not just about jo the, 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 the physical buildings, but it's actually about what it means for us as a university to create these, this resource and this capacity that we have. And the second thing I think in that context is we have now uh, built by the river. So we see the river more, much more than, than we did when I was here as a student. Uh, and I think that's also something that makes the campus a very pleasant place in which to work. So find your way around. There are lots of, particularly if you go along the river, lots of interesting places to see. Uh, but most of all, I hope you enjoy your time here at NUI Galway uh, and uh, that you find the place to be welcoming as I have. Uh, and that you enjoy working here as I have over the last eight months, more than I even expected uh, when I arrived. Uh, and I look forward to working with you all in, in making the NUI Galway an even better place uh, than it is now. So, I can't unfortunately stay. I was stayed for the, this the last time, but this time, unfortunately, I can't stay. I've, as you might understand, other diary commitments. So, you're in good hands. Uh, with my other colleagues. And uh, one last thing I'd say is, is, and I said this to students last, year, last week, which I might uh, well regret, but in your case, I, I, I sure, I'm sure I won't. Uh, on tour, I said, if you see me around campus, you might see me either walking quickly or in deep thought, but uh, do interrupt me. Let me, hurry, get, let me know how you're getting on. Say hello. Uh, and I'm very keen to know how people are getting on for good or ill. So people will tell me good things very often, but maybe not the others. So do feel free uh, to give me that feedback uh, because I don't hear it very often. Uh, so I would welcome that. Um, on campus, uh, very keen to, to engage. Off campus, different story. Uh, but on campus, please do say hello. And uh, I hope to therefore meet you again, as I know I meet some of you in, in, in the work context in uh, uh, working with me, but others, hopefully, uh, we'll meet you uh, in, in, in that context and other contexts uh, over the next uh, months and, and years ahead. Jeremy Margaret, thank you very much. Thank you.